Hi, this is Robin, and in today's video workshop, I'm going to focus on how to create reflections in Photoshop. Whether you're doing something seemingly as simple as replacing a sky in Photoshop or creating a more involved composite that involves multiple elements, knowing how to create reflections when they're needed uh, will help you sell the realism of what you're putting together. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the steps for how to create three different styles of reflections that you can add to your composites. And I am including a sky replacement in the category of composite because you are combining two different images at least. Uh, as much as possible, I'll try to show you the most straightforward methods that I know because in the demos, I'll go step by step. But do be prepared. They are multi-step processes. These are not one-step fixes. So the three types of reflections that I'm going to demonstrate how to build in this video are reflections in water after replacing a sky. And this is the image I'm going to use for that demo. And as you can see, it's just got a plain blue sky and that blue sky is reflecting into this water. So we're going to replace the sky and then put that sky reflected in this water. So that's the first type of demo. And again, you can use this with your own images. I'm just using sample images of my own. Uh, the second type of reflection I'm going to demonstrate is reflections from a subject, like a person or an animal or some living thing, or an object onto a shiny surface. So again, if you shoot a person, a portrait in a studio against a a backdrop paper or painted backdrop, whatever, and uh, you want to put them into a more interesting room that perhaps has a shiny floor, this type of reflection would come in handy. Uh, if you shoot an object uh, in a backdrop or a light box or something of that nature and then want to put it onto a shiny counter, whether it's a shiny wood or a porcelain or, or whatever, uh, to create a still life, you can use that second type of reflection I'm going to show you for reflecting subjects or objects onto shiny surfaces. And then the third and final demo I'm going to do in this video is creating a reflective wet pavement look. So again, to reflect a building or buildings onto a sidewalk, a road, a driveway, things like that. So Again, if you're building a composite scene with rain or snow, you're going to need to create something that has sort of a wet looking surface that reflects. Also, um, apparently I don't do real estate photography, um, but I'm told that people who do real estate photography often like to, have, even if it's not a rainy day when they get the real estate pictures, like to make it look like the road and the driveway are reflective outside the home because I guess it adds a little depth dimension, the colors pop more, and also I guess you'd get the benefit of seeing the building reflected downwards as well as the proper upright, so it could make it look bigger too. So just something to keep in mind for possible applications for these types of reflections. Uh, one last thing before I get into the demos, if you do learn something new in these demos or like what you're seeing, please feel free to click the thumbs up icon below the video. And also, uh, if you would like YouTube to send you a single alert when I do add new content to my channel, which is like one or two times per month, uh, you can click the subscribe button button below the video and then if you click on that black bell that says all notifications then you will get a single notification when the new content is posted again i don't charge i don't do spam emails so it's just simply a matter of letting youtube know to alert you to new content for your photoshop efforts and i'm going to take a quick sip and then we're going to dive into demo one Okay, so as I said in the first demo, what I'm going to show is how to add a reflection to water after a sky replacement. And so the first thing we want to do is you want to open the image that you're going to work with. And as I said, I've got mine open here. And something I always do when I'm working in Photoshop is I duplicate the background layer. So if anything happens in the process of uh, working with Photoshop, I don't do anything to damage my original. And if you haven't seen my other videos, just a quick tour. Um, my layers panel is up here at the top on the right. 
the properties panel is down at the bottom on the right and I have my toolbar docked to the right. So if you have your layout of your Photoshop interface a little bit different, uh, then you know where to find things based on where I'm going here. So the first thing I want to do is duplicate this background layer. A couple ways you can do it. So you can either do a control or command J to jump this to a new layer, or you can left click here on this layer in the layers panel, drag it down to the bottom of the layers panel to the add new layer icon, which is the square with the plus. And now we've got a duplicate layer. And so for that one, this is going to become my duplicate. I'll label it so you know if you look at this later background layer. Okay. So with that duplicate layer active, and you know it's active because you've got the blue highlight on it, now I want to replace this sky using Photoshop's sky replacement feature. And if you have a much older version of Photoshop, you probably don't have that. Um, so for those of you who do, we're going to go over to the edit menu at the upper left, left, left click on that, and come down to where it says sky replacement. So edit menu, sky replacement, highlight it and left click. And it takes us into the interface for sky replacement with this pop-up box. Now I'm not gonna do um, a lot of different adjustments to this image and this is not a tutorial on how to use sky replacement. So uh, that can be either in another video or you can look elsewhere for that. But the first thing we wanna do is come here to this little down arrow and try to find a sky that would be appropriate for this landscape. So I am gonna scan down through the various skies. Some of these came loaded with Photoshop and some are ones that I've just taken shots and included them and added them in here and others are ones that, um, oh, I'm looking, I caught my attention here. Other ones uh, Photoshop provided or they're out on the web. So what's catching my eye is this sky right here because I like the goldeny colors in it because it's suitable for this goldeny landscape here. So I'm gonna left click on that. And we've now added that inside the interface, um, the sky replacement interface. We're still in the sky replacement interface. Just a quick note, even though we're not going to get into a big discussion about sky replacement, be very um, conscious when you are adding new skies to images that they suit the land and the environment that they're being added into. If they're too jarring, even if you like the look of the sky, it has to fit the scene that you're putting it into. So the next thing um, I'm going to do for this image, because uh, it looks a little darker than I want it to be for the for my purposes, is under the sky adjustments, I'm going to just brighten this up a little bit. All right, so just a hint of light. Because see, if you look at this, just logically, there's light coming from behind the clouds. So I would need it a little bit more brightness back there, at least for my taste. The other thing is, again, because this landscape is so golden and yellow, I want to pump up the temperature to be a little bit warmer than what this basic sky is. So I'm going to click on that slider under temperature and just pull that up a bit. I'm watching the sky. Okay, so to me, that looks pretty good right there. Now, the note I want to give you with regard to reflections is any changes that you make to the settings in this sky replacement interface note them down, write down the numbers you've used and keep track of what you did. Because when you go to make the reflection, you're going to have to be sure you use the exact same sky and you're going to have to re-enter the settings that you put in here. Um, otherwise, they won't match from the sky to the reflection. So from, in my case, I'm going to keep track that I had a 9 and a 25 because I'm going to have to re-enter that information and I'm going to have to remember this sky because when you relaunch this interface, it's going to all go back to zero. Okay, so after you get whatever settings that you're doing, and those are the only two I'm going to do, come down to where it says output down here at the bottom of this sky replacement interface. 
And if you look at this little down arrow, there are a couple options. One is new layers, and that will give you a whole bunch of layers with a lot of different um, masks and ways that they have processed these different settings. It will be a lot easier and simpler, even though there are some sophisticated things you can do with the new layers, to just work and choose the one that says duplicate layer. So once you have that all ready to go, left click OK. And now we have the sky replacement layer here on the right in our layers panel. So I'm going to double click on those words and I'm going to just type a label that says sky replaced. So I can keep track of what my layers are. I'm just somebody who likes to uh, label my layers. Okay, so now that we have that duplicate layer with the sky replacement, what you want to do is turn off the eye icon. So with that eye icon on, we see the new sky. If you just left click on it, it's just a toggle. You're not losing that sky. You're just turning off the visibility temporarily. So turn off that eye icon for that uh, sky replacement layer. So now we want to go back to this duplicate background layer. Left click on that, make sure the blue is on it and that that is an active layer. And what we want to do with this is now we want to create the look for the reflection. Now, because we have a blue water in here in this particular image, I'm going to try to fake Photoshop into thinking that this blue is really the sky so that we can do the same thing we just did on the previous layer. So <laughs> with this layer active, we're going to go back over to the edit menu up in the upper left, left click. And what I want to do is go down to the transform and then come out to the flyout menu. And we're going to flip this duplicate background layer vertical. OK, so now it's flipped it vertical. So it's edit, transform, flip vertical. So now the water is up in where the sky should be. And we're going to hope that Photoshop thinks that it's got another sky up there. So again, keep that layer active. Come back over to the Edit menu, down to Sky Replacement, left click so we get this interface again. And sure enough, it put that same sky, because it was still active, I didn't do something in between in there. So that's a good thing. But what it did do is what I told you it would do. It put the adjustments back down to zero. So in order for them to match from the sky to the water, we need to put the settings back the way you had yours. I'm going to have to put mine back to how I had mine. So brightness, I believe I had nine. And I think I had 25 for the temperature. So I cranked that up a little bit to get it a little bit warmer. All right, so those are the same settings that I had when I did the sky replacement. So I've done it again for the water reflection. So now that I have those there, I want to again output to a duplicate layer and click OK. All right, so now that we have this, we can turn this layer back to right side up. So, and let's just label this so again we don't get confused. So this is going to be the water reflection. Or maybe another way to say it is water sky, sky reflection in water. Okay. So now that we have that, let's flip it back right side up. So back over with that layer still active, go to Edit, Transform, all the way down to the bottom to Flip Vertical. And now we've got our water with the reflection in it down at the bottom. So now, because we've got that there, we can go back to our duplicate Lay, background layer right here. And again, because I had to flip that to get the sky up, I don't want to keep that upside down because if I want to do anything to the water here, it's going to get mixed up as to what's where. So for that layer two, let's put it back to edit, transform, flip vertical. So it's back at the same 
upright orientation as the background. Okay. So now, if we want to do anything like lowering the opacity, like if this came out too dark for you, you can go up to the Layers panel to where it says Opacity. And what I typically like to do with Opacity is left-click and keep that left mouse button down and just drag across the word Opacity. Uh, if you prefer, you can click on the little down arrow and just use the slider. But I sort of just like to left-click on the word Opacity and then slide it the way I want it. Okay, so for me, I lowered it a little bit. So I'll just leave mine there. All right, so now, well, one of the other things I might do, because there is so much, um, it's this is optional, but, but I'm going to do it just to show you. So because there is so much rich golden color in this sky, in this landscape, and because the sky was very warm, what I'm thinking I might want to do, and you can decide for yours whether you want to do it or not, is bottom of the layers panel, come down to the add adjustment layer, which is the circle with the uh, line through it. Left click on that. And I'm going to come to Hue and Saturation. And I'm thinking I might f choose yellow here. So under where it said Master, I came to the right to the little down arrow. And then I specifically just said to work with the yellows. And I'm just going to pump up a little bit more color in that. Let me see if I want it darker. Yeah, I want it a little darker and a little bit more of the goldeny sunset in the water. So again, this is optional. So for my scene, it's going to be more color. Okay, using the hue saturation layer. All right, so now that we have gotten our reflection taken care of, we can turn the eye icon back on on the sky replacement layer. So make sure you're active on that layer. The blue is there. Left click once and now we've got our sky back in the scene. But of course, knowing how layers work, whatever's on top hides things below. So because this is the original scene but with a different sky, it's got blue water and that's why we are seeing this. So what we need to do is create a mask on this layer that will allow us to see through to the layer below. And so the way I'm going to do that for mine, so it depends, I'm looking to see what's the best way to do this. Depending on the shape of your water, you may or may not be able to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to choose my rectangular marquee tool from the toolbar. So that's the rectangle with the little dashed lines. I've left clicked on it. And anytime you make a tool active, you'll know it's active if you see the black behind it. And I'm just gonna click and drag a rectangle around this area where the water is. If yours, uh, it's not going to work in some way, what you can do is create a white mask um, and then just paint with your paintbrush with uh, the black on it to, to get that. So I'm going to, as I said, just use the marquee to for mine and see how this goes. So I'm going to just drag across with that marquee tool active and then I'm going to pull it all the way down. And I usually look where my highlighter is. So I, whenever I'm making selections, I go outside of the frame. I don't try to stay just clean to the frame. Okay, so now we have our marching ants selection around the area that includes the water. And so I want to create a mask on this layer. So I'm going to go to the bottom of the layers panel to this square with the circle in it, which is the add layer mask active. Now, you do have to have your marching ants um, active there for your selection. Left click, and now we have a mask added to that layer. So you can see if we look at the mask, it's just where I put the rectangular marquee. So it's showing the water area, and right now it's hiding the landscape and the sky area. And that's not what we want because we want to show what's below. So with that mask active, and you'll know it's active if there's a white frame around it, come down to the, or go up depending on what your layout is, 
for that layer, go to the Properties panel and go to where it says Invert because we want to flip this so the black is on the bottom and the white is on the top. So left click Invert and there we go. And now <laughs> by doing that, we've revealed the white part of the mask has revealed the sky from this current layer. And it's also with the black part of the mask blocking out the blue water from this current layer so that we can see the reflection on the lower layer. Okay, so now we do have our reflection with our sky and our water. Now, typically with reflections, um, and especially in water, but it could be in streets too, they are a little bit darker in the water than it would be in the sky. So what I want to do to darken this slightly is I'm going to add an exposure layer to this and try to darken up just the water area. Now, you might want to use brightness. You can experiment for your image and see which you prefer, but I'm going to try exposure. So bottom of the layers panel, down to the Add New Adjustment Layer, which is the circle with the line through it, left click come down to where it says exposure for the exposure adjustment layer and left click on that. And now we have a new exposure layer added to our layers stack. So now what we want to do, because what we want to affect is the water and not the sky, and right now the mask on that layer is going to apply to everything because it's white. So white shows black hides in Photoshop. What I want to do is move the layer mask that I had created for the water up to this exposure layer. Okay, so let's not start from scratch again. The way we can make a copy of it, essentially a duplicate of it, and drag it up is with your Alt or Option key depressed and keep it depressed. Left click with the mouse and just drag up to this mouse, uh, to this mouse, to this mask right here. And when it asks if you want to replace the layer mask, say yes. Left click on that. Now, right now, we're blocking the water, and that's not what we want to do because I said we want to darken the water where the reflection is. So make sure your mask is active so you can see right now the thumbnail is active. It's got the white frame. Left click on the mask, you've got the white frame around it. Come to your properties panel, and again, we're going to click invert. So now you can see the white is on the bottom. So what we do with exposure will only affect the water area. Okay, so again, I'm just going to wing it here and see um, how much. Probably we don't need much darkening, but I want to just darken it down a little bit because you can see it's sunsetting now with that new sky and the water would be a little darker. Okay, so I think for me, you can click the eye icon. So you can see as I click the eye icon on and off in that layer, we are just affecting this lower area. And I don't mind that's affecting some of the shadow because that actually is suitable for it being blocked there. If you want to not have it affect other parts of your image, if you did the same thing I did and use like a marquee, then you could just use your brush tool right there. It looks like a paintbrush. And with black as your foreground color, just make sure your mask is active and paint out the areas that you don't want affected by either your exposure or brightness. Now, doing this, you're essentially done. I mean, if, if you want to quit here, you can. You're, you've got a new sky, you've got the reflection in it, you're good to go. <laughs> if you want to get a little bit trickier, I can give you two options of things that you can try. So one is if you want to add a uh, motion blur to this scene, then we can do another step. So what I'm going to suggest you do is you don't want to lose all these layers that you've created. You want to create a, what's called a stamp layer. And to do that, we're going to use a combination of four keys all at the same time. So I'm going to press and hold the shift key. For me, it's the control because I'm on Windows, but so control or command, alt and, or option and E all at the same time. And now we have a stamp layer and I'm going to layer that, uh, label that. 
that's a stamp layer okay and what's meant by the stamp layer is it's captured everything that's been done in all the layers below it but without flattening them so you get the benefit of if you want to get rid of it you can go back and you haven't lost the work you've done but you've incorporated all of the, these different changes you've made into one layer so if you want um, again, depending on your image, I don't know, you know what your image is going to look like. If you'd like to add a little bit of motion blur to the water, I'm going to duplicate this. I always duplicate when I'm doing new things just so that I don't uh, mess anything up. I call it my insurance layer. Um, with that layer active, you can go to filter menu up at the top, down to blur, and then over to the motion blur okay and then you'll get this pop-up box for motion blur now clearly this is extreme and crazy but i'm just showing you how to work with the motion blur area here on um, this little inside interface so what you would do is depending on the direction that you would want your water to be moving you'd move this little go into this little circle here and just click and move this little line that's in there to the direction that suits the direction of your water so for me my water was sort of going that way now clearly this is crazy blurred so then you have to for the distance lower it down to what looks appropriate for your image and you know depending on what you want to go for and again if you have something like this like i do um and since i had included some of the landscape then you'd have to mask that out because that would mess it up. But if you're doing this and you want to show like a show slow shutter speed sort of effect, you could move it up a little bit and look like you're dragging the shutter and you're getting that uh, sort of milky, creamy look to the water. But I'm not going to do this for mine. I just wanted to show you the steps. So once you get it the way you like it for yours, you would hit OK. I'm going to cancel because I don't want to do that on mine. If we zoom in... A little bit on my image so let me see what I've got here so you can see that um, as I said the water ripples on mine the texture is going this way and this certainly has picked up the definition from the clouds but it's a little bit flat on the water so another optional step if yours is doing that too and again you definitely do not need to do this but this is just something to show you in case you want to try it um, again, having that uh, copy of the stamp layer, we would go to the filter menu, come down to where it says texture, and then in the flyout menu from texture, come down to where it says texturizer. And again, we're in yet another interface here by doing that. And I just want to be sure to mention that uh, when you are working with some of these different filters uh, and, and artistic filters and this kind of filter, uh, your image will have to be on 8-bit mode. So if it's in 16-bit, it will be grayed out. You'll have to go to your image menu in Photoshop and go to where it says mode and change it to 8-bit at least for the time you want to work with this and then once you get it set the way you want then you can change your image back to 16 bit in that same way okay so what this is doing is this is typically used for something like if you're doing painting effects or things like that to give sort of a canvasy or a textural effect or you could use this if you're doing a wall that you want texture but what i want to do is create something that will allow me to get some texture in the water so that's why i'm using this so again, we'll see that we're on Texturizer. If you look here at the right side of the interface, the texture I've selected is sandstone, and that's definitely what I want to use for this. I don't want a brick or whatever. And I want to do some, well, this is actually not bad. I don't want to do too much scaling. So for my purposes, I don't want too much texture and too large an effect of the sandstone. So I'm actually going to leave this where this is at around 50, 56%. Maybe I actually lower it just a little bit. 
55 okay so i'll just write it down just a touch because i just want a hint of this texture in here and same thing with relief um, we definitely don't want a lot of dimensional texture in this for this kind of effect of trying to add some uh, texture to water so i'm actually going to leave that i think where it is it maybe could go a little lower now i'm going to zoom back out so we can look at the image again and then the next choice you have is where you want your source of light to be. And again, because mine is coming from over here, I must have worked with this last because the numbers are, are sort of still in the same place that I'd like them. My source of light is up here in the top right, so that's what I've selected. You can click this little down arrow and choose whatever is appropriate to your image, okay? So once you get those settings the way you like, come to the upper right and left click OK. All right, so now you can see all this area that was flat before now has texture in it. But that looks a little bit like it's on a canvas, which I don't like that look of. So we're going to do the same thing that I just showed you a moment ago without adding the texture to it, which is to add some motion blur to this. Uh, and I'm going to just move this here before I get confused about where I am. Uh, so come back to the filter menu up at the center top here come down to blur and come down to where it says motion blur and once that's highlighted left click on that okay so again what did i say we want to let me just zoom out a little bit here um, we want to move this little line in the circle to an angle that's appropriate for the image that you're working with let me see where this is and when you release it it'll click i keep mine on preview so i can see what's going on here oh, that's too much uh, i'm going to tweak it because i'm not getting where i want to get it yeah there we go so that's the angle that i wanted for my water and then again, as I said before, you have to adjust the distance because this is giving you a really like super slow shutter kind of an effect. And that's just too much for this scene. Um, so I'm going to reduce the distance and I'll just keep releasing that little button from time to time to see how it's looking for my image. Uh, it might be a little bit much relative to how much I want. All right, that's looking pretty good to me. Okay, so I'm going to click OK once I get that motion blur the way I want it. And let's see if I can just zoom in again. Yeah, so now we've got in the water where I added the reflection and where it had been pretty flat before, some of the same kind of ripply motion going on that had been going on in the image so that um, I think it looks much more realistic and matched to the image. So when you're building a composite, you're at least if you're going for a photo realistic type of composite, uh, you want to try to make it look as, as real as possible. Uh, so now if we compare the background, the original image to this, we've transferred it from a daylight shot, probably in the fall, given the, or <laughs> California summer, you know, with all that brown, um, to a nice sunsetty kind of a scene. So that's the end of this demo. And as I said, these extra steps at the top are optional for you if they don't, aren't appropriate for your image, or if it's more steps than you want to get involved with, then I would say, just stop where I said to originally stop and not go to all the extra trouble. Okay, so that was how to create a reflection when you've done a sky replacement. So let's go on to demo number two. And as I said in this demo, uh, what I was going to show was how to add a reflection from a subject or an object to a shiny surface. And if we just get rid of her for a moment you can see that in this room it is definitely got a very shiny floor you can see the reflections from these pillars in the room the reflection from the window so it's a very shiny kind of a floor that we are working with in this image 
Now, I am skipping the selection and compositing stages of this. Um, I've started with a Photoshop document here, a PSD file, uh, because this is not a lesson or a video about how to do compositing and selecting. I do have other videos on my channel about how to do make selections, how to refine selections, and how to create basic composites. So if you are not familiar with how to do that, then maybe you can look at those and then that will help you with how to do things like getting this young woman into the scene. So anyway, you would start by opening your image that has the shiny surface that you want to use uh, in this composite that you're going to build and then duplicate that layer. So again, as I said before, when you're on your background layer, you can either do a Control or Command J, or else you can drag that background layer down to the Add New Layer icon, which is the square with the plus, and that will give you a duplicate background. Then you want to go to your image, probably a separate image, that has the subject, in my case it's a subject, or an object that you want to bring in to the composite, select them and bring them in, or you can bring in the entire image and then mask away the parts that you don't want. So it's your choice how you want to work with that. There are a lot more considerations besides that. If you look at my video on basic compositing about matching the perspective and the angle of view and the color and the light and good things like that, but I'm not going to repeat those here. Okay, so um, I have this here and we've got, I'm going to refer to her as a debutante, um, but this is a stock image. It's probably intended to be a stock image of a girl celebrating her 15th birthday, but I'm just going to refer to her as a debutante. So I want to make my subject layer and you want to make your subject layer that's going to get reflected onto the shiny floor active. So make sure that layer is active and we're going to duplicate that layer also. So make sure the layer is active, drag it down to the bottom of the layers panel to the add new layer icon, the square with the plus, and now we have a duplicate layer of her. And this is going to become my Deb <laughs> for debutante reflection. Okay, so I'll layer that just so we can keep track of what's what. So now I want to take this layer and flip this duplicate layer vertical. So again, we're starting to look familiar to what we just did a moment ago for the water and the sky scene. So with that layer active, come over to your edit menu, come down to where it says transform, and then come all the way down to the bottom to where it says flip vertical. Okay, so now we have her flipped vertical. And as I said, this vertical image is what's going to become the reflection to the upright image. Now we want to, obviously we can't leave her there, that doesn't look like a reflection, so we want to move this flipped image so that the bottom surface of the flipped image is aligned with the, up, the right side up image. If you have an image like mine, so I've purposely chosen this because it's an uneven bottom, so depending on what you're using, if it's a can or a vase or something, it may have the similar kind of a shape. If you're using something with a square bottom or a geometric bottom, it's going to be a lot easier to line up the bottom. So I want to show you the hardest thing because anything more geometric is going to be a lot simpler. To move her, we want to stay on that layer. Go to your toolbar, left click on the move tool, which is that cross looking icon right there at the top. And you'll know it's active in a couple ways. You'll see the black behind it when it's active and it puts a little pink or magenta line with handles around the object that you want to move. So once you see that, left click inside that box, but not on this little widget. Just left click, keep that depressed and just drag it down. Now, something I want to point out here, and then I'm just going to try to line it up to where it's lining up with the upright dress. Now, something I want to mention here, and let me just get off of that move tool because it's where I want it. For your scene, as I pointed out, I have these pillars and I can see reflections on this shiny surface. And where are those reflections? They are vertical 
below the objects that are being reflected. So that means for my composited image, I need to do a vertical pull to get that reflection down below her. If for whatever reason your reflections are off to an angle or pointing in some other direction, you're going to have to be sure that you not only pull and move that reflection layer down, but then you're probably going to also have to use a transform and rotate to rotate it to match the angle of the other reflections in your scene. Okay, so just keep that in mind. All right, so now I have this reflected skirt down here, but again, it's not lining up with the bottom of the skirt. So what I want to do is adjust the bottom edges of this flipped image so that they align to the upright image. And the way that I'm going to do that is using the warp tool or the warp feature. So go to the edit menu, come down to where it says transform, come out to the flyout menu and come down to where it says warp. So edit menu, transform, warp and left click on that. And again, you'll see another pink or magenta box with handles on it. So once you have that, you can start adjusting this. So each of these little handles will let you pull it. And with the warp tool, the reason I like it is you can click anywhere in the image and start moving and pushing and shoving here with the different aspects of this until you get it where you want it. So now I'm not going to be on a handle. I'm just going to left click in here and I'm just going to keep nudging and moving till I get the skirt lined up. And at the edges, I'm going to come in slightly because it probably would angle in just a little bit in a real reflection. So now again, I'm going to do it over here and bring this up to match with that part of the skirt. And I'm just alternating between grabbing the handles and just clicking inside. So now again, because this was a swoop, I need to click inside here and make sure, all right, we don't want the floor showing. We want this matched right to the skirt. And I don't want that little gap over there. So again, for your image, you just want to be sure it's touching. And I'm going to say that this is good enough here for my demo purposes, but you just know that you'll need to go up and down and, and play with it a bit till you get it uh, to where you want it. Okay, so I am going to go to the top of my Photoshop interface to where there's a check mark and left click to accept that. So now we've got our debutante reflection and primarily her skirt there. So now what I want to do again, I'm just somebody who likes to work on that took a lot of back and forth to get that the way I want it. So I don't want to do anything that might mess it up and not have what I like to call as I said an insurance layer. So you don't have to do this but I like to then take this layer that we just spent all the time on and drag it down to the bottom of the layers panel and create a duplicate layer. And I'm going to turn off the eye visibility and I'm just going to call this is the original layer and that's the copy layer. So I want to work on the copy because if anything gets messed up, I don't need to go through all that again. I can just throw that layer out and go back and start over again. Okay. Um, so now, what I want to do is, obviously, this is way too dark of a reflection. So again, look to the scene that you're working with and see what is the quality of the reflections in the scene. So I have these reflections to use as reference, and they are very, very pale, very transparent. So I need to get this reflected skirt to have something that's somewhat the same quality of transparency as what I already have for reference in my scene. So with this layer active, my duplicated uh, debutante reflection layer, as I'm calling it, um, I'm going to go to the layers panel and to the opacity setting, left click on the word opacity or use the slider. It's your choice and left click and keep that depressed and just keep sliding that down. It has to come down a lot in my case to match the quality of the reflections that are already in that scene. 
and I'm going to try to narrate and look at my image and see where it starts looking like it looks right to me. Somewhere in there is about right. I'm going to leave mine just about there. I think that's might be able to come up one, but I don't know if it's worth the mess. Whoops, it's, see, it wants to be on that layer, on that number. Well, 13 or 14 percent for mine. I'm going to leave it. It seems to want to go to 13, so I'm going to leave it on 13. It's telling me it wants to be there. Um, so now we have this reflection at the same quality to the other reflections in this scene. The next thing we want to do is to add a mask to this layer, so just a plain white mask. So bottom of the layers panel, go to the add layer mask icon, which is the rectangle with the circle, left click, and now we've got a white mask. So it's revealing, white is revealing this entire scene. Everything is visible that we've done here. But what I want to do is use a gradient tool because in reflections, you can see they sort of fade off after a certain point. They don't stay the same quality of reflection throughout the entire length. So we want to simulate that here too so it looks realistic. And a gradient tool will let us do that. What a gradient does is it lets you basically manage a gradual change to either color or light. So in your toolbar, the tool that looks like a rectangle with a dark to light is the gradient tool. So left click on that to activate it. Okay, and you can see it's active. We have the black around it. So that's the gradient tool. Now, what I want to do is go to the option. So for each of these tools, they all have their own unique options bars and the option bars across the top in Photoshop. So for the gradient tool, come up to the options bar and come over to this wide rectangle here. Uh, with the little down arrow and click on that and you can see all the different types of gradients that are available to you to use for different contexts and i'm hoping but for some reason it's not doing it here so um i think this first gradient and on yours hopefully if you hover over it it'll show it um, it's usually the background to foreground gradient and then the next one is a black to white gradient so I'm going to use the black comma white gradient. So that's what I'm going to click on for that. So hopefully that's what we've ended up with. Um, the uh, next thing you have to be aware of while you're up here in the options bar is be sure you're using a linear gradient. So there's all, so you can see how it usually does when you hover, tells you what you're working with. The linear gradient is the far left one. So be sure it's on that and not on the radial or any of these others. So left click and we want the linear gradient okay and so now what we're going to do is we're going to try to add a gradient from the bottom up here so that we're making some of this bottom part of the reflection fade away just like it's doing on these other reflections make sure your white mask is active you have the white frame around it so that is active and I'm going to left click below my image here so you can see where my highlighter is and in the center of it is where my gradient tool is so the highlighter is just to show you where the tool is I'm going to left click here and I'm going to start dragging up and you can you see the line that's coming that's a linear gradient and I'm just going to come partially up here through the reflection and then release and hopefully, let's see if we got it. Yeah, so you can see it's added a gradient. And because it's going from a black to a white, it's a gradual fade that's been added to the mask. So that means it's taking away some of this reflection. Now, if let's say you didn't like where yours ended up, you can left click and drag again if you wanted it to be more going more into the image. Can you see how that's more of a gradient? Okay, but again, a gradient is a gradual effect to light or to color. So I'm going to leave mine 
<laughs> where it is. Now, the next thing we need to talk about, then one other thing to keep in mind with this, and you would have to be back on the thumbnail if you want to do it. Um, I think mine is soft enough and looks appropriate relative, my reflection looks appropriate relative to the other reflections in mine. If for any reason on your image that you've created a reflection from, these edges look a little too harsh, you could click on, and again, make sure your thumbnail is active, come over to Filter, Blur, come down to Gaussian Blur, and then just do a very, very slight Gaussian Blur, and that will just soften up your edges a little bit and then click OK. All right, so that just adds a hint of blur to your image. Now, again, just like when I said, okay, you could be done at this point or finished, I guess is better proper grammar. Um, you could be finished right here because you've got your new figure. And let me just show you the before and after. So we've got our room with the shiny floor. We've added our debutante to it. And um, she's got a reflection now below her. So if you're happy with that, that's great. But again, I'm kind of a stickler for photorealistic composites. So let me just zoom in a little bit to show you something to look for here. If you want to keep going, this is an optional step. And I'm going to put this back to my neutral. If you'll notice, uh, it generally when objects touch a surface, and they can see it's happening here too, where they're touching the surface, whether it's a reflection or a shadow, it's a little darker, closer to the object than it is further out. So this still has at the base of her skirt, even though we've got this reflection here, a little bit of a quality of it's a cutout. If we want to sort of air quotes, plant her into the scene, so she looks more like she belongs here and is her, the way her reflection is working behaves more like the real reflections in the scene, there's something else that we can do here. So what we want to do is add an empty layer above her. So again, this is an optional step, but something for you to think about. So with that reflection layer active, go down to the bottom of your layers panel, left click on add new layer, the, that's the box with the plus, and now we have an empty layer. And what this is gonna be, let me layer it, is shadow below, and I'll say subject just because I don't want you to get confused if you don't have a skirt. <laughs> well, that won't be relevant to me. So that's the shadow be below your subject or your object, whatever it is you're working with. And I'm going to grab, because I've been working with a mouse, and I'm going to do this quickly, grab a stylus and a tablet, because for me, painting is easier with the stylus and tablet. So what we want to do is now use the brush tool. So in your toolbar, come down to this icon that looks like a paintbrush and left click on that and it is the brush tool, okay? And then you wanna have your black as your foreground color. So that's okay there too. Now, if we go just painting with black on this, it's gonna be way too dark. So again, as I said before, for all of these tools, they all have specific options in the options bar. So with the brush tool active, come up to the options bar and we want to lower the opacity. Uh, I'm thinking somewhere between 20 and 30% is what I'm going to need to be able to paint in a shadow underneath her and have it not be too dark underneath her skirt. Uh, let me lights at 20 and 30, so, uh, no, so let me try 30 and see how that looks. And since it's a blank layer, we could just do a stroke, and that's a little bit on the, and then do a control Z to get rid of it. Uh, maybe I'll take that down just a little bit more. Oops. All right, let me do 25. I'll split the difference between 20 and 30. And then I also want to do low flow. So if you do a low flow, it lets you build up strokes gradually so it doesn't put it all down at once. So with the flow, I also want that to be low because I don't want this to apply 
all in one shot. So I think I'll come down to basically that same layer that I did for the opacity or maybe just around. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. All right, so control Z to get rid of my test images because we're on an empty layer here. So that's good. Okay, so now with this brush tool active, what I'm going to do besides move this up so I can see. So if you zoom in, you can always see these things a little bit better. Um, I'm going to make sure my brush, so on looking at my tool here in the center that's winging around with the uh, highlighter, that circle in the center is my brush size. It's that yellow is not the brush size. The, the circle in the center is the brush size. What I want is it just a little bit bigger uh, than, there we go. And so what I'm going to do is make sure that as I'm painting, I'm going to have part of it overlapping onto the object itself because that should be partly in the shadow. It's not going to be just below. So now is when I'm going to switch over to be using the stylus. And I'm just going to start painting my shadow using that gray underneath the skirt and slightly overlapping the skirt. So you can see if I pull away, I've got a little bit of a shadow there. And I'm not going to be too perfectionist about this, but I just want to, for yours, take the time to do it right. But I'm overlapping the skirt and the bottom of the skirt and down onto the reflection. All right. Let me... And I, if I knew how to do a quick speed up, I would do that. But you can just watch me here meditatively <laughs> as I paint the shadow in here. And if you want to speed it up a little bit, you can also increase the opacity in the flow a little bit and then just lower the opacity on the layer. But I will just quickly do this. And each time I'm lifting my stylus, if you're working with a mouse, each time you lift your mouse and then paint again, then you'll build up the flow some more. And I'm not going all the way out to the end because that's up off the ground. Okay, so I think, again, just to give you the sense of adding the shadow, I don't need to make this absolutely perfect. And we're super zoomed in here. But as I said, spend the time on yours. And again, even if it's a bowl on a table, do the same kind of thing. Because for any kind of object on a shiny surface, it, the, it's going to be a little darker closer to that. So now, as I said, uh, we can take the opacity down just a little bit if it's a little too intense. And I'm going to set my tablet aside for a moment here. And then what I want to do is see if I can zoom out. So you can see, yeah, so I might take this opacity down just a little bit more because you just want the hint. So if I turn the eye visibility for that shadow layer, on, you can see what it's doing, how it's planting her. And again, just lower the opacity to your taste for that shadow. So now we have a shadow and a reflection and we've gone from an empty room to a person. Now, again, I'm not doing anything else compositing wise, affecting her because she's very contrasty relative to the room. We're just focusing for this video on making reflections. So as I said, look at the other video on basic composites considerations uh, if you really want to blend her better into the room. But we've got a very nice reflection for her that suits what's going on in this room. So I'm going to call that uh, demo finished for uh, making a reflection from a subject or object onto a shiny surface. And we'll go on to our third and final demo. And we're going to use this image here of a street scene. Uh, because as I said, this demo is going to be how to make reflection of a building or buildings onto a wet street. So we're Right now, you can see in this image, there clearly is no 
reflection. It's a regular pavement that's here. There's nothing shiny about this. And if you'll bear with me for one moment, um, I just always, just like I do with my camera, after I've been shooting for a while, I like to set it back to a certain set of basic settings. So when I go and grab it again, I know where I am. I like to do the same thing in Photoshop so you can do the same thing or not, just so that when I go to use a tool again, I don't puzzle myself as to what's happening. So since we just lowered the brush opacity and flow, I want to put that back to full opacity and flow. So if we go to the brush tool, it's where it needs to be. Okay, so now for this image, what we want to do is create a composite with a rainy day. At minimum, I want it to look like the rain has passed through and we have a shiny, reflective, wet pavement on the ground. And as I said earlier, some real estate photographers think it's positive to show a pavement looking wet to make the colors pop more in front of houses. So sometimes either they'll hose down a street or if they haven't done it, you can do something like this and add it after the, fa the, um, after the fact. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do with this is show how to get that shiny reflective surface on the pavement. But then I'm also gonna do a bonus demo at the end, and you don't need to watch it if you're not interested, about how to fake adding rain to the scene so it looks like it's actually in the midst of a rainstorm and that's what's causing the reflection. So we have our image open and you'll have your own image open of what the pavement is that you want to work with. And we're going to duplicate this background layer two times this time. So again, left click on that and drag it down to the add new layer, drag, add new layer. Okay, the square with the plus or else do that control or command J, whatever you prefer. So on this first duplicate layer here, this is what I'm gonna be calling the pavement layer. So let me layer label that so that we can keep track of what our layers are when we get a whole stack of things so what i want to do is select the pavement because that's the area that we want to put the reflection on and then make a mask for that area now depending on the road or sidewalk or driveway you're working with you may want to use a different tool than i'm going to use to make the selection but use what you want to, to make that selection. It could be the quick selection tool. I'm gonna try the object selection tool. You could even try working with the magnetic lasso tool or the polygonal lasso tool, whatever will work for you. Um, and also depending on what version of Photoshop you're on, you may not have the object selection tool. I'm gonna try the object selection tool, which is that square with the arrow going into it. I'm on my pavement layer. And I'm just going to loosely draw a line just outside of where my pavement is so that, that uh, Photoshop will hopefully snap to the pavement area of this image. And I'm trying to stay above the sidewalk with this, but capture the road too. And again, notice where my highlighter is. I'm coming way outside the frame when I try to do selections. Okay, and then release. And this is done pretty good because it got most of the sidewalk and uh, the road. It got a little bit onto the building that I don't want. So I think maybe I don't need to be too perfectionist about this, but I might try to see if I can just get rid of this part of this. There we go, that's better. Okay, so now I have the marching ant selection of my, what I'm gonna call generically the pavement. So it's the sidewalks and the road. And while that selection is active, come to the bottom of the layers panel and make a mask of it. So use this icon with the square with the circle. And now we have a mask that shows just the pavement, which is the white area, and everything else is blocked out, okay? Because black hides. Okay, so now that we have that, <laughs> we're going to, uh, if, so this is gonna be an optional step for you. My scene is obviously a very sunny day. Uh, if your sky already looks a little gray or stormy and you just wanna make it look like it had already rained, then you can skip this step that I'm going to do. But I need to add a sky that looks more appropriate to a wet, day and with a wet reflective day so we're going to do the same thing we did in that first 
demo of mine, which is to add a new sky to this blue sky area. So now we're going to come back to our layer stack and go to that second duplicated layer. And I'm going to call this sky replace. Okay, so I'm going to try to, add, excuse me, add something that is a little bit more appropriate. So with that layer active, go to edit, come down to sky replacement, left click. We get our sky replacement pop-up box and it will default to the last used sky. So clearly we don't want to use that again. So click on the little down arrow and let me scan again and see if I can find something that looks kind of stormy from among, oh, I like this one. <laughs> I'm gonna left click on this one. So just pick a sky that you like, and then you can click up in this area to hide those skies. And uh, for mine, what do I wanna do? I think maybe I'll make it a little bit bluer. Maybe take the brightness down just a touch. Let me see if I can make things a little darker. Yeah, that's making it a little darker so it looks a little bit more appropriate to the stormy sky. So I'm again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on how to work with sky replacement, but just you can make adjustments to suit your image and to suit the sky that you've used. So again, we want to output to a duplicate layer to keep it simpler. If you want to use the multiple layers and be able to play with them and make adjustments to them, then definitely choose the new layers. But I'm just going to suggest duplicate layer for now. Click OK. And now we've got our sky replacement there. OK, so now <laughs> I'm going to turn off the launch layer. And uh, I probably should change the name of this. This is my sky launch layer. That's what launched me into the sky replacement. So I'm going to turn that off because I don't want that duplicated. And this, I'm just going to call sky replacement because I'm going to work with that layer. Okay. So now what we want to do is the same kind of thing. We want to duplicate this sky replacement layer. So again, make sure it's active, left click, drag it down to the new layer icon and we've got that duplicated as a second layer. And this is gonna be the ground reflection. Okay, so in order to do that, guess what we have to do? We have to do the same thing that we did again in, this, in the uh, first demo. We wanna flip this horizontal, so it's edit, transform, all the way to the bottom to flip horizontal. So edit menu, transform, flip vertical. Okay. And again, now here we want to do the same kind of thing that I just did in the prior demo with the girl's skirt. We want to use the move tool to move this scene down so that, that the buildings are aligned with the base of the buildings in the upright original. Well, right now we can't see them <laughs> because this is covering everything up as layers do as they go up in the layer stack. So in your layers panel, lower the opacity so that you can see what is going on. And I'm talking and watching my image to see where I can see it well enough to line it up. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it there for now. Then you go to your toolbar, choose the move tool, which is that cross. You'll know it's active because you have the bounding boxes with the pink around it. Don't click on the widget, but left click in here and start pulling it down so that you can align this flipped image with your original upright image. So again, you're trying to align with the bottoms of the buildings that you're working with in your image. And what I'm looking at is right in here, um, because this building has white, I'm trying to align the white from the flipped to that. And again, I'm not going to worry about it being too perfect. So for me, that is lined up. 
So I'm going to turn off my move tool. I'm going to go back to the lasso so we don't move it around. I'm going to look at my reflections on the pavement and maybe I will, in the layers panel, lower the opacity a little bit more for them. That looks that looked a little bit. Yeah. So at least for now, I am lowered my opacity even further from what I did just to do the lining up uh, so that it is visible there. So now we're going to use the mask that we created right back at the beginning for the pavement because we don't want all of this overlapping area here. We only want our ground reflection on the ground. So we're going to do what I showed you once before, which is not start all over making a mask, but copy and drag a mask. So pressing Alter Option, keeping it depressed, left click with the mouse, and drag up to this ground reflection layer so that we get the exact same pavement mask up here. And the black is blocking out anything that came above the ground line. And the white is just revealing the sidewalk and the road. So now we've got a reflection on just the sidewalk and the road. So we're doing OK. <laughs> so now the next thing is to do what I had also said and showed you how to do before, which is to create a stamp layer above this. So again, we were going to capture everything we've done without collapsing it. So with that top layer active and the blue showing, we're going to do that Shift, Controller, Command, Alter, Option, and E all at the same time. And we created a stamp layer that captures all those prior steps. OK, <laughs> so now, optionally, you can, if you want, add a little bit of Gaussian blur, because if there's water on the ground, it might be a little bit blurry. So let me do my usual thing and duplicate this layer, just so when I'm playing around, that's my insurance. So this is going to be a bit of a ground blur. And just minor. It doesn't. It's not supposed to be super blurry. Uh, so with that layer active, come to Filter menu, down to Blur, down to Gaussian Blur in the flyout, and left click on that. And I think I could even go less than one. I just want to hint to this. It doesn't need to be. All right, so I think that'll help a little bit. Do, do it to taste for yours. I'm just showing you a way to do this. And now again, I don't want the whole image blurred, so be sure that you do that Alter option and bring your pavement mask back up on there too, so the blur is only applied to the pavement. Now again, um, like what I had said, let's um, do another stamp layer here just because I think it will be, well, I'm just going to drag it. <laughs> so I'm going to duplicate this layer. So this ground blur layer, I'm going to drag it down to a duplicate layer. And we're going to call this a darken layer. Or else, now I'm changing my mind. <laughs> Sorry. So skip that. So we're not going to duplicate that layer. Just leave it where it is. I think the easier way to do it is I'm going to add a curves layer above this blurred ground blur. So in your Layers panel, I want to darken this shadow down a little bit. So just what I had said on the shadow in the water, this realistically should be a little darker. It's down between buildings and everything else. So logically, it should be a little darker. So in your Layers panel, come to the bottom to the circle with the line through it, which is the Add Adjustment layer. And you can either use Levels or Curves. I'm going to use Curves. And here, now we've added a Curves layer. And you can see the histogram from shadows, midtones, and highlights, and the curve um, as the top layer. Now, what I want to do is sample. I uh, notice in the properties panel for curves, there's this little pointy finger icon. I have it set so that mine is always on. So what that allows me to do is, if I come in here, you see how my where the highlighter is, where I'm moving it right here, it's changed to an eyedropper tool. So I can easily sample a point in my image and it'll show me where on the curve it falls. So if this is getting a little bit too bright here in this yellow area, I can left click there, sample that, 
And if you look at my curve in the properties panel, it has put a dot right there in the center. So now if I pull down towards the dark area, because you can see if we pull down and go towards dark, to darken down the road, there we go. So now we've darkened it. And now what do we want to do? Of course, we only want it on the pavement. So same thing we did before, alter option, copy the mask up to the curves layer, or you can clip this layer to the layer by low. Uh, you don't, if, if you don't want to work with the mask, then just press alter option and slide your little mouse up till you see that symbol with the box with the down arrow and then you can clip it and then it'll only work on the layer uh, on the mask so either way is fine okay so now if i turn off the eye icon you can see that we have just darkened the reflection between the buildings on the ground so we've got a wet reflective surface so at this point you can stop <laughs> you've got a sky that's appropriate to having a wet reflective surface. You've got the reflecting, reflections of the buildings in here. You've added a little bit of blur and you've darkened them so that it does look like there's water and so it could be some movement that would cause a blur. And again, I'm not being super perfectionist because I'm just trying to show you the steps that are appropriate to making the reflections. If I was working on this as a full composite, then I'd go back in and I'd burn down some of these light bits in here because that wouldn't be appropriate to this scene but so you could stop right here for your image if it looks good for you something i want to do and it's an optional step for my, for me and you can decide if you want it for yours is i'm going to add another stamp layer above this um, and this is going to be the darker uh, reflection on the ground that's what that layer is Okay, so with that layer active, I'm making another stamp layer with a shift controller command alt option E to keep using and building on all of that. So there's my stamp layer. What I want to do is a simple color grade on just the buildings because this is very dark and sort of bluish and this is sort of dark and bluish but the buildings still look like they were from my original sunny street and they're very warm. So what I want to do is to use the eyedropper tool to sample a dark place in the sky. So in your toolbar, go to the eyedropper tool. It looks like an eyedropper left click, so it's active. And what I wanna do is look in my sky and this looks pretty dark up in here. So I wanna left click. And you can see if you look at the bottom of the toolbar to the color picker, it's made the foreground color that color that I just sampled. And what I want to do with that sampled color is I want to add a solid color adjustment layer to just the buildings. So we're gonna, for now, go down to the bottom of the layers panel to the add adjustment layer left click on that and choose solid color. And if this works the way it's supposed to, <laughs> it will use this sampled color as the solid color to overlay over the entire image. And there we go. And I'm just gonna click okay, cause that's what I want. Now, needless to say, you can't see <laughs> your image anymore. So that's a problem. Uh, so what we need to do is add a blend mode. And in your layers panel, by default, the word normal shows up uh, at the top of the blend modes. If you click on that little down arrow, you see all the different blend modes. And what do you notice as I'm mousing over them, you can see what effect the different blend modes have on your image. And you can decide what you want to use. And as I went past overlay and soft light, I like the look. Usually overlay is a little harsher and soft light is a little softer or gentler. But in this instance, I think I'm going to go with overlay. So I'm left click on overlay. So now we've applied the overlay blend mode to the solid gray color that I want to use to color grade my building. Now, what we want to do is I want to create a mask that represents just the buildings. And if I try to build it on here, I'm going to end up with a vector mask. So I don't want to do that. I want to get rid of the default mask that comes up and then make my own mask. 
To get rid of this mask, press and hold your Alt or Option key, left click on that white mask and drag it down to the trash icon at the bottom of the layers panel. There we go. So now we have no mask. So now what I want to do is select the buildings and create a custom mask to represent them so that this color only gets applied to them. I don't want to make the sky even darker and the shadows even darker down at the reflection because then it keeps that problem of it not matching each other. So again, I'm going to use my object selection tool. I'm going to try what I did before, which is I'm going to just trace with that object selection tool active and using the lasso tool up here in the options bar, trace around and not go on too much of the street because I don't want to pick up the street and the sidewalk. I only want to pick up the buildings. So the further out you go, the more Photoshop will think it's supposed to capture more of the image. And again, notice where my highlighter is when I'm creating selections like this of things at edges, I go outside the frame. And we always need to connect the ends to get the marching ants. And then I'll release. And Photoshop has made a selection. And you can see there's, uh, with the object selection tool, and you can see some of this is a little bit not where I want it to be. So I'm going to switch to the quick selection tool in my toolbar. Click that little fly out arrow and I'm going to go to quick selection tool. And you can see there's a plus sign. So that means I'm going to add to the selection. So here I'm going to push it up so it goes out to the edges. Here I'm pushing out from the inside, pushing out to get this to the edge of my building. And if you have to keep going back and forth, you can. I'm going to use the Alt key to switch that plus to a minus to get this. And Photoshop learns as you do iterative different attempts on this so that it learns where you want it to go. Up here, I missed some of this part of the building. Uh, this missed, so I need to start on the inside and push out with the plus. And same thing here, I need to push just down to the edge, bottom part of the building. That went too far. So with the minus, I'm going to pull it back to along the edge of the building. Okay, so I think that I'm going to call that good enough just so you don't have to watch me fiddling with the um, selection. So we have our active selection um, around the buildings. We've got the marching ants. And now with our color fill, or let's call this our buildings color grade layer, so which was done using the color fill. I want to come down to the bottom of the layers panel to the add layer mask icon. That's the square with the circle. And there we go. Now we have a mask that represents the white areas represent the building, which is what we want to show to get the gray. And the black areas represent the sky and the reflection, which we don't want affected by that gray. So hopefully, let's see here. Yeah, you can see, there we go. So it has added a little bit of that sky matching color grading to the buildings. If you want to, in the layers panel, lower the opacity a bit, you can. It's, you're just going to have to, I, I can't give you a formula or a number to use because you're going to have to do it based on what's right for your image. So that was optional step number one beyond the reflective ground was to, if you have to color grade something in the scene to make match it make the sky and the reflection, that's one way to do it is using that kind of a color fill layer. So again, you can stop right here because you've got the moody sky looks like maybe a rain passed through and this, the ground is wet and it's reflecting the buildings. So it's perfectly fine. But I like to just give you a little more optional bonus content if you want it and so you know how to do it and it would be appropriate in this kind of an image. So let's try something else. So again, with this top layer that we just finished with the color grading active, I'm going to do yet another stamp layer. So Shift, Control, Command, Alt, Option, E, all at the same time. And we get a stamp layer. And this is going to be the base for rain. 
okay? So we're, what I'm going to show is how to fake rain in this scene. So if these aren't just a storm after a rain and it's actually still raining, this is what I'm going to try to show you, see if we can get it to look like it's raining. So above this stamp layer, we want to add an empty layer. So bottom of your layers panel, hit the new layer icon, which is the square with the plus, and where we have an empty layer. And this I'm going to label noise equals rain, because we're going to use noise and make it hopefully look like it's rain. So now with that empty layer, what we want to do is fill that layer with black. So I'm going to go over to the edit menu at the top left of the interface and come down to where it says fill. So edit, fill, left click. And what I want to use is black. So because I had sampled the gray, we don't have black as our background color. So um, just make sure that you're going to fill it with black. And you can look here. So either you can use the foreground color if it was already black, or you can come down and do what I did, which is to have black there and click OK. And now we've got an entirely black layer. You can see it both on the layers panel as well as obviously it's covering everything else we've done so far. So now we want to add some noise that's going to become the raindrops. So we're going to go to the filter menu at the top of the interface. Filter. Noise. Where's noise? Noise. And come to add noise. So filter, noise, add noise. Left click. And I'm going to move this out of the way so you can see what's here. So you can see that now there's a ton of noise that's been added to that black layer. And this is what we're going for. <laughs> so um, usually I tell you to use your own taste, but I think for the first uh, tier of making the rain, I'd suggest starting at an amount of 25% for the noise. What you want to do, so if yours is at some other number, put it at 25% for the noise for this step of the process of creating rain. Then go down to where it says distribution and be sure that you have Gaussian checked on and also make sure that you have monochromatic checked on. So I'm going to uncheck it just to show you what happens. So if you don't have monochromatic, then you get color noise. And that's not the effect that you want for rain because it's not going to have all that color in it. So, uh, and I do have my preview checked on so I can see what's happening. So be sure that you have 25% Gaussian is checked on and monochromatic is checked on and then accept it with by clicking OK. All right. So now we have a black layer that's full of noise. And again, we're not seeing our image, so that's not so great. So we want to lower the layer opacity for that layer. So in your layers panel with that noise layer active, go to opacity and let's start lowering it. And now, why don't I lower it to there and we can always adjust it. Um, I've lowered mine to 65% so I can see the image, but that's still not enough. We need to also do what we did before with this color layer, which is to add a blend mode. Uh, so in your layers panel, go to where it says normal, go to the down arrow. That's very dark and moody, isn't it? And before I used overlay, oh no, see, you see what I mean? The overlay is way too harsh. So I'm going to use, this time I'm going to use soft light. So I have a soft light blend mode and I have the opacity on 65. And I think that's still a little dark for my taste, but let's leave it. I, I want to be sure that I can see the rain. So maybe I'll just leave it at around 70 for now, 65, 70 for now until I see what the rain looks like. Okay, so that's very fine noise and it's difficult to really see it as rain at this point. So the next step is we want to make that noise bigger. We want to scale it up so that we can turn it into raindrops. So again, with that same noise equals rain <laughs> layer active, we want to go to the edit menu. So edit down to transform and then to the flyout menu. And what we want to do is scale it or enlarge the noise. So edit, transform, scale. 
All right, and again, you can see we have this active for scaling this. Now, we're not going to work in here. We're going to work in the options bar, which, as I said, is this bar across the top for edit, transform, scale. And what we want to do is basically scale up the noise that we currently have by 400%. So when you look in the options bar, you start coming across and you can see there's an option for an X and Y axis, followed by, as you go more towards the right, a width and height. And we're going to work with the width and height. And between the W for width and the H for height is this little link icon. See that? And what you want to do is click on that so that link is active. You want these two things connected to each other. And you know it's active because there's a dark black behind it. Go back to the box for the width. And I want that to be 400. Okay, so by linking them, it has automatically changed the width number and the height number to match each other. So they're both 400%. And if you come back and look at your noise, look at how much bigger it is. So that initial noise from that layer has now been made huge. Now, something to keep in mind for a different kind of scene in a different context and a different sky, uh, it could look a lot like snow. So if you want to use this to create snow in some other context, you can do that too, but we're using it to make rain. So with it at that scale, I'm going to go to the top of the interface and I'm going to left click on this check mark to accept that. Now, the next thing we want to do is the same thing we did with the water in the first demo. We want to add some motion blur because raindrops don't look like this. So um, we want to go up to, where am I here? <laughs> motion blur, filter, blur, motion blur. So filter menu, down to blur, motion blur. Okay. And again, I've got it on preview so I can see what's happening. And what we want to do is work with this circle with the little line in it again so that you get the rain going at the angle that you want. Typically, rain does not come straight down. Typically, rain is at a little bit of an angle, but you decide for you, it's your image <laughs> and your artistic choice, what level of angle that you want it to have. But I'm going to, I think, make mine be at that kind of an angle. I want it to be coming down a little bit like that kind of an angle. Then, as I had mentioned before, we want to work with the distance. Now, in the previous one with the water, we didn't want it too much because it would have looked like a super slow shutter speed. Here, we do want to blur some of this noise together so it looks more like a rainstorm with the rain pelleting down, <laughs> coming down in, in droves. So we want to increase the distance. So grab that little handle there and start dragging this. Release it from time to time so you can see. And I'm looking at it both here and in the preview to see what it's doing. That actually is pretty good. All right, I'm going to go with 75 because um, it, it, it's got a nice driving rain kind of a look to it. Um, and it's not too much. All right, so I've got both the angle of the rain and the distance. In other words, how together it's going to be, how much the rainstorm is going to be, uh, the, the noise is going to come together to make it look like rain. So I'm going to click OK to accept that. So now I can look at my opacity again and see how it's showing up in my layers panel for that layer. And I might bring it down just a little bit. All right, and um, I'm going to leave it on that soft light blend mode. So now at this point, what I have, and I'm going to just click that. You don't need to do that. Um, what I have is my final image. So I've got, I went from, let me get down to the bottom so we can see it, uh, this original sunny street with obviously no reflections and it's just a dry day and a sunny day, uh, to this final image where we've 
not only added a reflection, so if their rain had already passed, I'm going to take a quick drink here. So I'm not too gravelly. <laughs> if the rain had already passed, you could just have the reflection. We added the sky to be appropriate to a wet ground reflection. And then optionally, we also color graded the buildings to match the sky and the whole situation. And then very optionally with the bonus portion at the end, we've added some fake rain into the scene to be causing the reflection on the ground. So this is as far as I'm going to go uh, with this video workshop. In it, I've shown you how to, first of all, add a reflection to water after making a sky replacement. I've shown you how to make a reflection from a subject or an object onto a shiny surface. And then in that one to add a little bit of shadow to make it realistic. And then in this situation, how to generate a wet street reflection from nearby buildings. In your case, it might be one building. Um, and then with the bonus content, we got how to create uh, fake rain. So I hope you have fun experimenting with your images and creating reflections in your composites to make them look more realistic. Enjoy. Take care.